What's awful is that there are no young ministers coming up in today's age. And a lot of people don't realize that. They don't realize that. Preachers are not being uh, gathered up in churches any longer. I've said it to a couple people in the organization that I was with beforehand. They, they only had 56 members, ministers, under the age of 50. And there were six of them in our church. 56 in the whole organization. It's not a small organization either. So what's happening? Whenever we look inside the churches, the, the, the number of people are, are pretty big. When we look inside of the churches, we see a lot of programs, but yet no one's getting the call to preach. No one's getting the call to go out and to minister to people on the street corner any longer. What is wrong with the churches? If you look at the numbers, sure they're thriving. If you look at the program, sure it's a healthy church, but I don't look at that to see the health of a church. I look at the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God. And not only, I'm going I'm to bring it down just one level, not only the churches, but what about the people? What about the people? And I, I tell God, and I feel the spirit of the Lord really strong right now. And I tell the Lord, I don't want to speak my opinion in any shape or form. Lord, just speak through me. And you know what? I'm going to have to just say what the Lord wants me to say. Where are we in our spiritual state as Christian? As Christian. Where are we? A lot of times a preacher can get up and I can look into the eyes of, uh, of church members and I can say, you know what, it seems like they're thriving. Maybe they're being blessed financially or maybe they're being blessed this way or that way. But that does not attribute to the health of a Christian. We see where David in, in the Psalms, he always constantly praying to God, why do the heathen rage? Why are the heathen constantly being blessed and I'm righteous I do your will I'm full of the spirit of God and it seems like I'm kicked while I'm down because the prosperity on the outside doesn't necessarily have an indication of what's going on on the inside so what's going on on the inside of our hearts what's going on on the inside of our hearts on the outside, like I said, a lot of people seem like they're, they're being blessed, like they're doing great. But where are we spiritually? I don't want to ever get to a place. And like I said, I've been in areas of my life where I just felt dry, when I just felt like nothing was going on, like I just could not get full of the Spirit of God. I've been through those times. But you know what? Every single time when I, when I finally just started praising God on my own, I came out of it. But it seems like a lot of people in the church world, they get content in the dry state that they're in. They're get, they get content in the dead place that they're in. They get content. Eventually, if we don't have a drink of water, we'll die. We'll die. We'll die. There's one thing about being dry. But it's another thing to be dead. So where are we in our spiritual state as Christians? As Christians. Where are we? Like I said, we go through dry times. But it's Jesus Christ that said, come unto me and I'll give you the water and you'll never thirst again once you drink of me. You see, as we walk into church services, as we walk into church services, it's not up to someone else to bring us into worship, but it's our own, our own decision, our own decision. It's not someone else's job, and sure, there's a lot of things that help, I understand that. But it's not someone else's duty and job to bring us into worship. Either you want to worship God, or you don't, or you don't. In Psalms chapter 143 and verse 6, it says, I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsteth after thee as a thirsty land. See? So what was the psalmist's answer? He said, I'm dry. I'm barren. I, I don't know where to turn. I don't know where to go. I'm getting real dry. So what did he say he was going to do? He said, I'm going to stretch forth my hands. I'm going to start praising you. And I hope 
hope that you come by. I hope that you water me down a little bit. I hope something happens, but I'm not going to stay in this dry and barren land. That's what he says. That's what he says. If you are content being dry and dead, then you will always be dry and dead. But the moment you say, God, come by. God, I want to thirst after you again. I promise you, he'll come by. He'll come by. I promise you, he'll come by. Praise the Lord. We live in a church world today. Whenever uh, someone starts to feel the Holy Ghost, they say, go into a back room and, and do whatever you want. But let me tell you, I want the fire of Almighty God, not only in my church, but I want it in my life. I want something way down deep in my bones so that I can hang on to it, church. Amen. I want something deeper than just a little old church service. I want the anointing of Almighty God to resonate in my heart so that I can go out into a dive and barren land called the world and that I may reach people that are lost and dying and go into a devil's hell. That's what I want for my life. That's what I want for my life. There's no way that a church that is dead and dry can go out and reach a lost and dying world. We always use that saying, it's like the blind leading the blind. But I see the church world, it's the dry leading the dry. Think about that. The dry leading the dry. And then we wonder why in the world are young ministers coming up. Let me tell you, I didn't grow up necessarily in a big church, and you can fault me for that if you want, but I can tell you I was full of the power of Almighty God. It didn't matter how young I was. I had an old-fashioned preacher say, you know what, I don't care how old you are. Get behind this pulpit and preach what God has laid upon your heart. And me being 12, 13 years old said, you know what, God, if you can use me, use me. Here am I, Lord. Use me. Just do something in my life. Do something in my life. If you want to be content living a dry life, then by all means do it. But let me tell you, you're not going to drag me down. And I know that there's a lot of Christian people, and I hope that this church is full of it, that's going to say, I'm going to stand up for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if so, it wants to be dry. I don't care if it's my spouse. I don't care if it's my neighbor. I'm going to get in with God, and I'm going to get all I can get from God while I can. Now that's church. That's church. Let me tell you, church is just a building. If that's all you make it, let me tell you, there's nothing else about it. It's just a building. It's just a building. But whenever people decide to get on fire for God, just like Jeremiah and I say it a lot, but when he said it's like a fire, oh, it's shut up in my bones. I've got to do something for God. I got to do something for him. Let me tell you, when people decide to get on fire for him, oh, our churches will be more filled with the power of God. People will rise up and youth will decide, you know what, I want some of that. I want some of that. I want some of that fire. I don't want to be dry like sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so, but I want to be filled with the power of God. That's when people get on fire for him. That's when people get on fire for God. It's not when they go into a church service and have a program, and those programs are great, and I want to have more of them, let me tell you. But you know what? That's not saving kids. 